Hello there again. Um, for this portion I'd like to sh talk to you about the reports that we use with Graduation Booster. Um, the first thing that we see is whenever a notice is delivered whoever the user is gets an email stating that they have however many notices in their queue. And as you can see I had quite a few on October 27th. Um, and I can either click on the notices or I can go directly to the home screen where I can log in. From there I always like to go to the, the departments tab where I can see how everything has been responded to within our school division. On here you can see that we have uh, over 10,000 students that are entered into um, into the the program and all of the data is uploaded as regularly as we possibly can. Uh, currently we're waiting until we can get a secure network set up so that they can upload nightly. Right now we're just sending our data in um, usually about once a week or twice a week. Um, each of the notices that come in are, are put in under the open notices and right now we are currently using this in all of our high schools. We have two high schools, Patrick Henry and William Fleming, and then we have two alternative sites which are programs of Forest Park Academy and, and Nulsey Taylor Learning Academy. Um, I'm the central office person and anything that hasn't been assigned to a particular person in one of the schools comes to me. Um, in the central office we have two responders, uh, myself and our uh, executive director for student services. At each of the schools we have the principal or principals if we have assistant principals. We have the counseling staff members and we have student support specialists who are assigned as responders. Our student support specialists are, are kind of like a truancy officer where they are responsible for um, going out and tracking down students who are not attending school on a regular basis. And so this program has been particularly helpful to them. When you open up your notices tab, you see a, a, a page that looks like this. This is from one of our alternative sites where the principal didn't receive as many notices as everybody else does. But at the top of each screen you see a notice timeline. and it, The notice timeline will show you how many notices you have and that's the, the vertical uh, axis and it will also show you the dates that the notices came in on the horizontal axis. Each notice has a little blue dot showing you when it started and it, it extends until it's closed. And unfortunately Mr. Anderson hasn't closed any of his notices at this point. Uh, but you can see that he has received some period attendance alerts for five days where students have, have missed five, con five periods of a particular class. I have a feeling that those were referred to him from a student support specialist. Um, so I'm going to click on one of those and so we can see um, where it goes from there. Um, this student received a, a period attendance alert for five days and it originally went to um, Mr. Graves or Mr. Anderson from uh, Gail Graves who is one of our student support specialists. Um, and Ms. Graves is telling Mr. Anderson that he needs to talk with the student because the student says that she needs a job in order to keep her house and that's her priority. She was encouraged to come to school, complete one class, and, and she has. And that uh, Ms. Graves will do all she can to help her secure employment. But she wanted Mr. Anderson to talk to the student knowing that all the student had to do was finish up this one class in order to earn a diploma. So this program was really good to help us out because otherwise this student might have gone under the radar. The student is only at the school for one period and if nobody noticed that she wasn't in all of her other classes because she doesn't have any other classes, um, she probably wouldn't have been found as quickly 
unless we had had this program. But going back to see the um, original notice that was the referral from this one, because down at the bottom of the screen you can see where it says notice referral following from here. Um, this is what M Mrs. Graves originally had and on each of the notices the responders have to respond to them saying what the fundamental issue is, the intervention type that took place, how the issue was resolved, and what the observations were of the person who was the responder to the notice. So this is Mrs. Graves responding as the student support specialist and if you'll notice the case has not closed yet because Mr. Anderson hasn't responded to it. Um, but you can see that um, this one was the trigger was the period attendance alert five days and it was referred to her from engaged minds so the program itself picked up this trigger and sent it directly to Gail and it, the instructions are generic for a period attendance f alert for five days it just say please send a five-day letter to each of the students that are indicated by this notice in addition please contact the student to discuss the issue so Mrs. Graves did discuss it with the student she she found out that the fundamental issue was work over school it was an in-person meeting with the student um, and as it was resolved she said that the student needs resources not available at the school because the student is very concerned about her house and she wants to secure a job um, so Mrs. Graves had a long conversation with the student talk to her about how important it was for her to graduate so that she could earn even more money with uh, that high school diploma and the student is currently back in school um, we, we see her on a fairly regular basis and she is working toward completing that class this is uh, what you see if you go on to um, engaged minds or in, to graduation booster into a particular student. Um, you can see the top is an engagement index over time and it tells you how much the, the how engaged the student is in school. When do they receive notices and are they tuning out? Now for each of the notices there is a uh, time that it it takes for the notice to expire. So over time if the student doesn't receive any more notices their engagement index will go back up so it doesn't have to stay low forever but this digital dashboard actually takes the data from our our information system that we have for all of our students and it puts it into a more user-friendly um, tablet so that the stu so that the people who are using it have the information they need and they don't have to page through things that they really don't need. It'll also take all of the data and, comp and compile it in such a way that we can receive those alerts. Like it would take somebody days and days and days to go through all of our students to figure out how many, t how many days a student had missed a particular class period. But with this program, it just instantly picks all of that information up and sends out notices to the appropriate people. But in addition to what you see as the uh, engagement index over time, we also pull out the student information. So that information is readily available to whoever is using the program. Pulls out certain pieces of student demographics, um, programs that that the student may be a part of, whether they've been a dropout involved in our truancy program, um, whether they may be um, identified as uh, need, requiring special education services or that sort of thing. It also pulls out information about the parents or guardians, uh, the contact information. So all of that is available to the person who's using the program and they can make the appropriate contacts as needed. Um, and that's under the information tab that you see at the top of this page. The second tab is the notices and that was a notice that we went through earlier so that you saw that this student had a period attendance five-day alert. You can see on here that Gail Graves responded originally and she's closing it pending Eric Anderson responding. She's already um, closed a 10-day alert as well. 
Luckily, the student has not had a 15 or a 20 day alert, so she's, she's actually coming to school. And uh, originally, the student also had a, a withdrawal code alert stating that she had withdrawn from school at some point, whether it was as a dropout or going to another school. Okay, the next tab is the school tab. And the school tab tells who this particular student's counselor is, their student support specialist, and whoever's, whoever is uh, assigned to that student who has them on their caseload. And if we've calculated a GPA, it will come up under the GPA tab. But the next one, the next tab is very important. It's the flags tab. And it will show us the student's attendance. So we see their attendance by period. And um, we also see their daily attendance. And we see any entry withdrawal information. The next tab is the assessments tab. And we have, um, in Virginia, we have what is called our Standards of Learning Test. It's an unfortunate acronym, but um, we do use it um, so that we can see if students are performing at grade level for particular classes. We also use these, we use certain tests to verify credits for students to graduate. And so each student needs a particular number of verified credits in particular subject areas so that they can graduate from high school. Um, on here you'll see each test twice because there will be a proficiency score and a scaled score. Um, this information is not as readily available within our um, student information system. Uh, it's really it's tedious to go through and get it because each year is in a different tab and so having it all compiled in one area is really nice. And the last tab we have are the courses that the student is currently taking and then it also gives a modified transcript. We don't have all of the GPA calculated or the, the sum of all of the credits that they've earned. But you can see what classes they've done well in, which ones they have difficulty in, and we also use it to um, see if we have if we need to put students into a credit recovery class. At the top of the page, you'll see that there's a tab that says Refer Student. Any person who is using this can refer any student who is who has data within the system to anybody else with who is a responder. Um, but I'm not going to show you how to do that because I don't have a student currently that I need to refer to somebody. But the last tab at the top is the Analysis tab, and that gives us some fairly interesting information. Under the Notices Summary, I can see how many notices are still open, when notices were created, how many were closed, when they were closed. Uh, under the Average Engagement Index, I can see how engaged our students are as a whole, um, where it says Notice Issues Codes. Uh, I see that over half of the issues are unknown, and that's primarily because I've been the major user and I don't know all of the issues or I haven't taken time to look up the issues. Um, but for those that have been uh, looked up or the uh, student support specialists or counselors have been responding to, this, to these issues, um, about 21.5% are academic issues. And that's really good data to have so that we know okay if we can work on trying to help students recover credits we're going to get more from the students. Um, you see that a lot of the issues are discipline related a lot of them are expectations outside of the school that the students are dealing with a lot of them are home issues several of our students have moved so there's a variety of reasons why our students are having the issues they're having. Uh, if you look at the notice resolve codes you can see that 36.5% uh, of all of them were referrals. And again, I refer everything out, so a lot of those are mine. The ignore means that the student is probably just going to ignore uh, the discussion that they had, or they're not going to do what was asked of them. Or it could be that um, the student moves, so we think they're going to ignore it because we haven't done anything with them. Or um, the student is already out of school and we can't find them so we think they're going to ignore it or 
the issue has been primarily resolved and it, this is just uh, happening for some reason that they're getting the notice and um, we don't think that there's really an issue anymore so it's going to be ignored. Um, if there's more if there's more intervention that's required that's about 13 and a half percent we make sure it happens uh, about 10 about one tenth of all of them have been resolved some of them are going to require an administrator to look at and some of them are going to require resources that are outside of our jurisdiction and also on this page I can see who's logged in in the past week uh, and I can see that the student support specialists at PH have really done what they're supposed to be doing and the student support specialists at Forest Park and the counseling uh, staff at, at Patrick Henry are, are getting on the ball. Um, unfortunately the principal at Forest Park who needs to log in hasn't and the counselor at Forest Park who needs to log in hasn't. So I can go over and on one of my visits talk to them and, and show them they haven't logged in and they're going to have to do something about that. So this is a great screen for me to use and and to get some some interesting data off of. Now as the administrator I have some other things that I can do with this. I can add to reports um, and most of that I, I would have to be talking with the folks back uh, at, at Engaged Minds to, to get their help to do that. Um, I can add users or I can change the users um, how the level that they can use it use the um, graduation booster at. Um, down close to the bottom you see interventions and the behavior monitors and that's really what I am most interested in is making sure that we have the appropriate monitors to um, get notices from to address the issues that our students have. And these are, are examples of the behavior monitors that we are using. Um, it's really important for all of our students to pass their 8th grade reading and math SOL tests once they get into high school. For certain special education students, that's the one SOL test that they need to pass in order to graduate. Um, but if our students who are in high school haven't passed the reading 8 or the math 8 SOL test, we can use that as part of our recovery efforts and um, provide those students with additional um, tutoring so that they can get closer to graduation. Uh, I also have uh, in-school suspension alerts for students who are frequent flyers there. I have a out-of-school suspension alert because students who have 10 suspensions and are in our special education program um, were required to do a manifestation determination analysis to see if their suspensions have been due to their um, disability and if they are then we need to um, see what what we can do in order to make sure that it doesn't happen again. Um, I can look at our grades and we can alert the guidance counselors that this student got an F on an interim. We'll also have uh, F at the nine weeks report or F at semester so that students can go back and and work with the the content that they missed in order to not fall behind and make sure that they are keeping up with their cohort in order to graduate on time. Um, we have birth date checks so that I can see if a student is over age for their grade level. If, they're, if they are over age I can put them uh, at Forest Park if they need uh, some kind of um, credit acceleration so that we can get them back with their cohort and so that we don't have you know, 18 year olds in the ninth grade. Um, we also have different uh, alerts for attendance. We have school status alerts saying whether they've withdrawn or not. We have a withdrawal code alert which says if they've ever withdrawn from school. Um, and we have grade level alerts which tell us if a student changes a grade level. Um, but as you can see, we can change the start date of the behavior monitor when it will send out the notices and we can change the frequency if, if we only want something to go out once or if we never want it to go out because it's not right or if we want it to go out daily we can modify that um, but I, it, I have the ability to go in and create 
lots of different behavior monitors based on the actions that are already available to me or I can just call up the guys at Engage Minds and say hey can you do this for me based on this data and they are so responsive in, in getting things prepared and calling me making sure that they're doing it right making sure that um, we've got the kids narrowed down to exactly who we're looking for and uh, they are just a joy to work with this is an example of adding a behavior monitor they have different algorithms that they put in um, and this is to add a period attendance alert for 30 day period for 30 days that a student has missed a um, particular class period and I just changed the the numbers in num period attendance and that's unexcused to greater than or equal to 30 and less than or 35 um, from another trigger um, I can filter it by school or status or grade level um, I can change the start date I can talk about the frequency um, the engagement index effect is how it will decrease the student engagement index that you saw on the very first page and then the decay time is the number of days that this particular notice will have an effect on the student engagement um, I can also preview the the monitor to see if I'm getting the right results it will tell me it will tell me how many uh, notices would be sent out and so I can filter even finer in order to get a reasonable number of students who would be picked up by this um, by this filter and then I, I state who is going to receive the response or to receive the notice.